sugar and spice There's an apple pie in Sammy's Pottage Kitchen Tis the season! Welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. And yeah, there's snow on the ground and it's coming up to Christmas season. Got a Christmas party coming up for the Prairie Tech Electric Boys, which is my husband, and, and also um, our nephew-in-law is what we always call him, but it's kind of funny. Mr. Crittle. So we're doing a Christmas show coming up and I'm going to show us how to make food centerpieces. Edible. I'm going to make vegetable, I'm going to make fruit, with chocolate of course, and of course I'm going to make some decadence that's like little cream puffs, pofiliers we call them. And they're going to be dipped in chocolate and we're going to put them on these little Christmas tree cones that I've got started here. I'm going to show you how to make the little cream puffs. So I've got to do that pretty much first. And then I'll show you that you get these cones like this and you need to cover them because they're for crafts and arts. And Mitch, well, I was talking about Mr. Crittle, Mitch Crittle, who is our partner in the, in the electrical company, in Pritech Electric, he said to me, if you put chocolate on the strawberries, I'm gonna be at the party. And I thought, wow, it isn't even for the booze. I'll show you that later. Right now, I've got a pan over here. Background music is my husband and I on our Christmas album. You need a half a cup of water and a half a cup of milk. Put in here, I'm gonna turn it on. It's quite an easy thing to do. It's called shoe pastry. And most people just know it as puff, like a, a cream puff pastry, and that's the way I'm gonna keep it, layman's terms. I like using good salt, and you have to put a little bit of that into the liquid because I want it to dissolve. So I'm using Himalayan pink salt, and I really like that one. It's healthy for you, same as sea salt. And you don't need a lot, about a quarter of a teaspoon, but it does need a little bit. And I'm going to need a cup of flour to put in after it comes to a boil. Also, I've got two teaspoons of sugar. And I just put that all in here. That all has to dissolve together. It's always good to use a wooden spoon. The reason I'm wanting to do this first is it has to get in the oven and they have to bake and cool before I can decorate them. So I'm preheating the oven to 425. Christmas baking is fun. Christmas cooking is fun. It's all about color and pizzazz. It's really fun. Now it's important to bring this to a rolling boil so that the butter that I'm going to put in right now actually disappears into the water and milk mixture before you add the flour. So I'm going to need approximately seven teaspoons. I don't know, what am I saying? Four. Four teaspoons. This. I'm making a half a batch. So I'm going to let that come to a boil. Oven is preheating. It is now. They only take a few minutes to bake, but you, the prep also doesn't take long. So I'm gonna wait for that to come to a boil. <clears throat> Over here I've got a bunch of strawberries starting to happen because in the pots I've started with chocolate but I'm going to add chocolate in there. And for the show pastry, the puff, cream puff pastry, you're gonna need one of these baking bags with just a round point. Because I'm kind of making mine so that there's a little funny peak on them. So once they bake, they kind of turn into little birds. And it makes it a prettier thing like it's a bunch of partridges in a pear tree. It's, like I said, fun to bake. So I'm just getting everything pre-prepared. I've got another one ready for other decorating just in case I need it. Off in the corner. You can see behind me here, well, we have Christmas, first of all, everywhere. So it's a wonderful festive feeling. I love Christmas baking and cooking. The only thing missing are the grandchildren because 
The funny apron I'm wearing, I got from my mom years and years ago, and I've kept it because I just thought it would be really nice when I was a kid, of course. That's what we did, Christmas baking and cooking for 10 people all the time. Look at it, it's starting to come to a rolling boy, boil. And it's just becoming quite milky, like that. And then when you pour in the flour, it's pretty simple. You just gotta put it in when it's really in a full rolling boil, take it off the heat and just vigorously stir it. It's gonna become really thick, really fast. It looks gunky, but it's, it's great. And you need to keep it cooking and stirring in there until it comes away from the, I'll put it on the fan because I just spilled flour on there. And that'll make the fire alarms come off. I should have come off of the burner completely. Easy clean up. Ha, oh, messy cook. So you can see it's all coming together really well. But you gotta keep stirring it. And it's gonna have to come away from the sides like that. Then I'm gonna have to let it sit for a few minutes because it needs to cool before you add the eggs to it because you're gonna have to beat eggs into this. But you see how it's become a cooked kind of a paste? That's why it's called shoot paste. That's called uh, spelled C-H-O-U-X, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm not the best speller. But if, if I'm wrong, oh well, look it up. Shut the fan off. Okay, now that has to sit and wait. And then I've got these four eggs over here that I'm going to beat into this dough. But I'm going to set it to the side because it has to cool down. And you can do that by hand or you can use a mixer. I'm going to use a mixer because I just want it to be quick and easy when I'm doing it. Meanwhile, I'm waiting for that to cool down. I'm waiting for the oven to heat. I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to make sure my, my chocolate is melted. I got to add some. And what the best chocolate to use are these wafers. Because it's already tempered chocolate. If you want, you can use the really intense uh, uh, Calibo chocolate, but then you better temper it, which means you've got to heat it up, cool it down, and then warm it again. So if you're not in the mood for all that work, or you don't have the time, like me. So I've got some kind of medium dark chocolate here, and I've got these really dark, dark chocolate wafers, so that it doesn't become too intense for the average bird. So I'm just gonna turn the water back on. Explain that in a minute. It's important that you don't heat chocolate just in a pan, or you can do it in a microwave, but you have to be really careful, because if you overheat it, you break it, and then it becomes curdly, and it doesn't, it's not pliable to work with. So this is called an Aubin Marie, this pan. Um, layman's terms, uh, I guess it's a double boiler. But it sounds so fun to say Aubin Marie. <laughs> My French is so pathetic, but at least I have a few of those terms down. So I'm just melting this up because I've got to wait for the dough to cool down enough and I want to show you something. These cones, how do you cover them? This is important. You just take parchment paper and toothpicks. It doesn't matter if it's crooked or straight or whatever it is. I'm going to move this over here because that's what I'm going to be putting the, the cream puffs or the profiliers on. But then I can show you kind of what to do. Just need a few toothpicks. It's funny, I was opening the toothpick container and trying to shake them out, and I thought, well, that's going to be a nightmare, so I just took the lid off. So you just do it sideways like this, and you wrap it all around. Take some toothpicks, because that's how you're going to be fastening your foods as well. But you want to cover it because it's just for food safety. I'm a bit of a stickler about food safety. And you need a scissor, simple thing.
And you're gonna cut off the, the, the bottom so that you can stand it up. Now I did the other ones ahead of time, just so that it looks like I got a forest going on and I actually will have. It's really fun to do a party with your edible centerpieces. It's not a lot of work to make them, depends on what you're making, of course. The pofiliers and the, like, the little cream puffs that I'm making, you can actually just buy those if you don't have time. And then you are the one that has to then decorate them. That's not such a big deal, is it? Well, I didn't get that one on tight enough. So you see, that's what you have to do. You have to make sure you have it tight and strategically place your toothpicks. There we go. That's a nice song we're listening to. It. We've got a Christmas concert coming up too, so it's good for me to be listening to my Christmas music. Um, December 9th here in in the George Lay Theater in Langenberg. It'll be the Sammy Rose Band, that's six of us. And we'll be singing the song, Let's Make the Baby King. It's, um, I did not write it, a song by Jesse Winchester. Jesse Winchester is a Canadian singer-songwriter. A little trivia. I gotta grab a plate out of here. We call this the other cupboard, where the rest of the clean dishes are. Nice to have white plates. Okay, so I can turn this down because it's heating up beautifully and melting. I've got a little bit of white chocolate in this one and I've got the dark chocolate in here. And mostly I'm using the white chocolate to glue the bottoms. So you take a little bit of chocolate like this and you put it, it becomes edible paste. <laughs> mostly it's just because you don't want this thing to fall down or move anywhere. So you just paste it on the bottom like that. And just set it in the middle of the plate. All right, now I've got a forest of things that I have to do. So I'm gonna just start here because then you get an idea. Now first of all, I need, you, you gotta see that I've got all kinds of um, herbs in the back here. I've got mint. Mint is gonna definitely go with the Strawberries. I'm going to move this to the back because I don't need everything at once. So I'm going to use this one because I've got the dark chocolate on there already to start with the strawberries. I'm going to have, have the toothpicks handy. So, got the chocolate here. Just going to show you, I'm going to get started on it. I'm going to start from the top. I'll move over to the island after I have the room to do it. Do so you want some of the smaller ones? It's pretty simple. But you're going to want to stick the toothpick in first, really, like this. And then you're going to take the strawberry and put it on there. Just want to get the ball started so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to have one on the top like that. I'm just going to start while I'm waiting for the shoe pastry to cool down for me. So I'm going to throw another one in here because I need to have room in between to put the mint leaves in there. So I'm going to throw a few of the toothpicks in right away. How many do I need? I probably need to put four up there because it's okay if they touch each other. And what's really nice is when you're picking it off, it just comes off clean because because of the paper, the uh, chocolate will release really easy. And if you don't quite put the picks in right, you can move them. It doesn't matter. I've taken the greens off, of course. So I'm just going to start here. All right? There's another smaller ones on the top. I'll put the crowning glory on at the end, of course. You know. 
putting the star on the tree. Okay, so that's just the start of it. Then you can take little mint leaves, like little pieces like this, and you're going to stick them in between with a toothpick. What? Better put a little chocolate on him too, or else he's not going to stay. Oh, look at that. That works better. See, you learn something every day. So I'm just going to move it to the side because I'm going to work with that over here, actually, in the long run. I just need to remove a few things because I need to get the puff pastry together. I got so many things happening that I don't even know what I want to do first. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Okay, I'm going to go back to this because my shoe pastry is ready for the eggs. It's cooled down enough. Ah, I just have to move this to the side. I just didn't want to waste time while I was waiting for things. So I'll put a couple of things away. I got to continue with the strawberries here in a minute. Clearing one's path is a good idea, especially when you got a lot of things going on. But I got a plug in right here. It's really important that you add the eggs one at a time when you're doing the choux pastry. I'm going to get my um, cookie sheet back here. As you see, I've got, you can use parchment paper, but I really like using the uh, silicone sheets. They're really nice. They're easily washable. Nothing ever burns when you put things on here. And that's kind of important when it comes to cookies or any of this kind of baking. So, cracking an egg, one at a time. Should have the beaters, I think. Oh, hiding them. I'm being distracted with the Christmas music, I think. Mixed and a mingle and a jingle and beat. Okay, I'm going to disturb the piece here. It's kind of all funny and loose. You don't even know, but you, at first you got to really not do it fast because you're going to have a mess. See, it's all crumbly. But it will, it will blend. If you put it in before it has cooled off, it makes it a little stiffer once it's cooled off. But if you put it in before it's cooled off, well, the eggs are gonna kinda just cook. And of course, the batter just won't turn out. So it's a very thick and funny batter at first. Well, that one's incorporated. So, next egg. I'll get the other one ready to go. Can't see every couple tries to stop. Yeah. Christmas music kind of adds to the atmosphere. Again, you start really slow because if you've got a really strong hand, you can do it with the wooden spoon and just do it the old fashioned way. But it's pretty hard to, uh, to incorporate it fast. It's kind of fun though. I had my, my granddaughter, she was 11 at the time, help me with that. She's a like, grandma, it's like tar. I cannot stir it, and see, it even wants to choke the beaters, because it does, it gets really, really thick and tarry. But that's why you got scrapers to scrape it down. Got to get one out of the drawer. I've kind of moved all my tools away from here because I need the room to work. I just, just take it down like that. Now I'm going to throw the other egg in. Always good to have a wet cloth handy when it's doing something messy, and I do. I can see that flying all over the place. So this is what you do. So you got all of those eggs beaten into it. Messy, messy. But it's all good. And I've just got to go turn down the heat on the chocolate for a minute.
Perfect. The chocolate is beautifully melted now, so I just shut it off and move it off the heat. This one I'm only using for glue, so it's going to be just fine the way it is. Well, I've opted to the wooden spoon because the mix master was starting to spray it everywhere. And this is the cream puff uh, dough that I'm making, the profilier dough. And it has to bake, so I'm going to be continuing with this later on in the show when they're baked and I have to fill them with cream and all that stuff. But I dived into the show without even saying uh, who I really was or what I'm doing. <laughs> We're on location here, Access is on location with me in uh, Langenberg. And this is my little cottage kitchen. So we've been doing a series of Sammy's Cottage Kitchens and it's be being viewed all the time on uh, Monday evenings at seven o'clock. So try to catch all those, because these shows will be on there too. But during the season, during the December season, they're also going to be airing these shows separately. So if you want to catch the recipes, I will have them on my website at um, sammyrosehollenberg.com. That will be given to you on the end of the show as well. So I'm going to continue now. I hope that was the information. It's just for anybody who has not caught the show, and you want to see the Christmas shows, we will be viewing during December. And all of December or within December. I don't know the exact dates. They don't give me all the information. But meanwhile, I got to get these things in the oven or they're not going to be baked. I was saying how we have to make the little cream puffs. Now, there's tricks to working with this dough because it's sticky. So you see, I have a little pitcher here like this and I have my piping bag with it's just a plain point. You can make them fancy and you can put a ridged point on there if you want. I don't think I have one handy. And you just put it in here like this and you open them up. Because otherwise it's going to be a disaster, right? So now I want to get that dough all into that bag. See, it doesn't fall all over the place. It actually goes into the bag. Be pretty hard because you need to handle the pan and you need to handle this and you need to be able to be sure that things aren't going to fall all over the place. I'm messy sometimes, but not that messy. And then you take it out of the pitcher like that and you work it down into the bag. Love this song. Who wouldn't like this song? Pretty Paper. We're doing that one on our Christmas concert as well. Now it's quite simple. You just make little, see I'm putting a peak on them because I kind of want them to turn out like little birds. And you don't need much, it's about an inch around. They puff right up. And you leave about two inches between them. It's just got to leave breathing space. You need to squeeze pretty hard on that bag because the dough cannot be any softer. If it's softer, it's not going to turn out. You try to pile them up a little bit because you don't want them to be, <laughs> it's going to be a big beak. Like that. They're not much to be seen. My husband's playing the dobro on that song. The Dobro, it's a 1926 National Steel, actually. Beautiful instrument. He plays it pretty nice, too, to be honest. <laughs> the band that we're going to be playing with for our Christmas concert on the 9th of December is our six-piece band. Charlotte Nedley is on bass and vocals. And uh, Nathan Lay who's a teacher here, a guitar teacher for all kinds of children. Uh, I think about 40 students. Oh, I got a big one. I shouldn't talk and do. Uh, he's playing lead guitar. My husband's playing lead guitar, rhythm guitar, steel guitars. That's Jack Hollenberg. And then my nephew, it's wonderful to have family and friends, Adam Lay, has just started playing with us and he plays a real mean rhythm guitar. I'm very happy to have him with us. And last but not least, Adam Keogh, who is uh, fireman, on the fireman's calendar for the hospital, the children's hospital, and he's our percussionist, and he just lives next door. Here we go, see? They just look like this, not, nothing too fancy. 
Now I pop them into this oven. Make sure that the heat is the right temperature. And I'm going to need to put them on for about 20 minutes. I think I'm going to put a timer on. 20 minutes. I'm going to set the rest of the dough aside for now because I won't need any more than that for the tree. And it does keep in the fridge, so I'm going to pop it in the fridge. Pretty paper, pretty ribbons of blue. Now, I'm going to do some fun stuff. If I want red or green, no one green. Take care of my little bits of dough. Pretty paper, pretty ribbons of blue. I should say that if anybody's interested in having us come out to do Christmas parties for them, you can call me at 306-743-7514. I cook for you, I can sing for you, I don't do dishes. Oh, well, there's the drawback. Don't do dishes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move over here with my strawberry tree. It's fun doing this. Here we go. Toothpicks. Reset myself up. It makes a wonderful centerpiece. I'll finish it up with the cookies that I'm going to be making later. So now just continue with the strawberries. I should stick to some of the smaller ones for the top yet. So I'm going to stick the toothpicks in here. There's a new kid in town. Can you imagine your guests or your family's delight when they see a tree that they can actually just, it's a beautiful centerpiece and at the same time you can eat it. So, dipping it in the dark chocolate, see? Because you want it to hit right to the paper so it holds on. Strawberries are always wonderful, and with having the mint with it, yeah, you know, it just looks so Christmassy. Chocolate flavor is impeccable, too. Now these ones on the top, what's really nice thing to do too, is to, I'm gonna do one in the middle now, I've got these going on, um, is to take more toothpicks, get them in here, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do, just to make a variance. I'm gonna put chocolate on both ends. I'm gonna need five in here now. These toothpicks keep holding the paper on well too. And two. There's one in there already. I guess that's the one I put in for the paper, to hold the paper. Okay, now I'm going to take, tip this end first here. But you gotta be careful because you gotta handle it too. So now, the other end. So, you see it's got that end going on too. And you can put a little sprinkles, but I think I'm just going to dust it. I'm going to put some snow on it later a little bit with um, some, uh, you know, icing sugar. That's probably the best. There's a new kid in town. It's intense work. So I don't want to talk too much and make a mess of things. Okay, so I'm tipping the end like that. I'm going to be licking my fingers pretty soon here because that just looks too good not to lick. But then I shouldn't do that. Probably won't. Because really, you shouldn't lick your fingers when you're cooking for other people, especially. There's a new kid in town. And you're only going to want to put a layer in between like this to do the difference. You know, you don't want to have it all the way because then it'll look all too much the same. I'm going to put the mint in last. I'm going to 
have to take my fingers and clean them because I'm putting chocolate everywhere and that can happen too. Peep cloth here. Who would think something so, you know, could, uh, so decadent could be healthy, huh? I need a fatter one to fill in the space there. Let me see what I got. This one. And then you just, after you got this finished, you're going to put it in the fridge to chill, right? Okay, so you see I've got some of the chocolate on the outside like that. You can also dip them in some white chocolate, and I think I'll do that on the bottom. But meanwhile, I'll just keep on going with these. And every time it gets a little fatter, right? So this is going to feed a lot of people. There's a lot of strawberries going on here. That's why it's good for a party. Two, three, four. I need six. Every time a little bit more, right? And the thing is, the greens are on here too, and you could leave that on, but then, you know, you don't really get the chocolate, so that's not nice. Everybody wants the chocolate part. It's funny to sing along with myself. It's funny to listen to myself. People often ask, after you record your albums, do you listen to them? <laughs> Not too much. Because it takes a lot of work to put together an album. So by the time you're finished with it, you're kind of tired of yourself. Tired of listening to yourself, for sure. But when you only hear the seasonal one, like this, the Christmas one, once a year, it isn't so bad. Okay, now, I'm going to start filling in a little bit with mint. makes a difference in the whole look of the tree. Bigger leaves in some places, like right in here. And then I'm going to use a toothpick because it's going to need to be held in place. So you need to have these toothpicks handy. And if you take a, a bigger leaf like that, you can hold it in, you see? It's pretty. Now I'm still looking for a crowning type one that's, I've got to save one that's going to be really nice for the crown. You can put a different kind of star on the top with different fruit if you have it. I just don't. So I'm just going to be putting one strawberry on the top like that. I'm going to put a little bit more of the mint in. Strategically. i got to dip it or else it won't stay, of course. It's um, good to do this sort of thing when you're having parties. I'm going to be doing a vegetable one too because um, people are making healthier choices these days. And, you know, even though there's a lot of decadence during the holidays, you need to be able to have the choices. And that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. It's a big tree. You can use other fruits in the middle of this too, like blackberries. I don't know, do anything you want to do when you're making one of these trees. I like the green and the red very much, because so I'm sticking to that. We never made these sort of things when we were kids because didn't have that much fresh fruit. I think the only thing we had was oranges. Am I right? I think we just had oranges. Uh, and that was a big treat. The Japanese oranges, they called them. So the mandarin oranges. And they came in these wooden crate boxes. Does that bring back any memories for anybody? Yeah. Go. More chocolate. Get 
more mint in there. I might have to stick a few little blackberries in there somewhere. It might look nice. That's what's fun. You can do this and you can change your mind. You can do whatever you want because it's your creation, your design. So I have those here somewhere. Over here. I've washed them all ahead of time. Very important that you wash your fruit ahead of time because um, if you do it right before you're making the tree, they're going to be wet. And then, well, it's not going to work. It'll just, uh, it won't, the, the chocolate won't stick properly to it. So I'll have to stick a few blackberries in there. That's what I'm going to do. And you know what? You don't even have to, you don't even have to put the chocolate on those. You just sort of stick them in there for filler. See how it's pretty? See? There you go. What a great idea. I'm going to continue with this till I get right to the bottom. And then I'll show you how I'm going to finish that all. Well, would you look at what's all going on here? I put a crowning glory on. I found one big berry. But now, you see, you've got a lot of gaps in here. So I want to put the mint in the middle because now you're going to get the real greenery happening. It becomes an amazing centerpiece. Okay, I'm a little more mint in here with some chocolate. And when people pluck it off and there's a little bit of mint on it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't hurt it at all. I'm going to take some mint and put it on the very bottom here, too. And you can carry on with this and put the mint on and tell you silly. But right now I have to just take a little breather from this because I've got to go. You get really in, engrossed in your project. You see, it's starting to look really nice. I'm going to put snow on it at the end, too. But I have to get my little pofiliers and cream puffs that are pofiliers or cream puffs, whatever you want to call them, out of the oven. They were done for a while already, but they need to sit in there and dry for a little bit. See? So they're really wonderful, very light, very nice. Exactly the way I want, but of course they have to cool down before I can do anything with them. So I'm just going to finish this off because I want to snow on it and then I can set it aside because then whatever I put around it matters. Uh, it could be cookies, um, it could be other fruit. So right now I happen to have other fruit and I have some enough mint here to put around the bottom. So I'm just going to keep on putting a little bit of leaves in here. I think I need something on the top. You can play with this forever, but it has to come to an end at one point, and you have to cook other things. This can be done ahead of time, and it can be kept in your fridge for, I would say, 24 hours. After that, you know, uh, it should be used up because you're putting the chocolate with the mint. I'm just going to put a little bit more in here before I call it a classic. It's doing art with your food. Playing with your food, right? I've been accused of that over and over again. And if you dribble a little bit of chocolate anywhere, it doesn't matter. It's not as neat. But it's, you know, you got to make sure that your leaves are going to stick. I need to stick something in the middle there. I've used all kinds of little blackberries in here too this time. I like the look. I'm going to be setting it to the side because then I'm going to grab another tree and start making a bit of a vegetable. How many of you are singing along with me? That's the Jingle Bell Rock. Boy, that's classic stuff. It's funny how those Christmas tunes, they just last. They go on and on. People come up with new Christmas tunes and it's the old ones that everybody wants to listen to. It's pretty funny, really. Just a little more mint in there. Then I'm going to have to stop. And I'm going to add some blackberries and mint leaves around the bottom. Just looks pretty. Finishes it up. And my chocolate covered fingers have made a bit of a mess on the plate. So I have to have a cloth to wipe that off around the edge. 
because you do drop a little bit of chocolate. Hey, there's the right song for this. Rocking around the Christmas tree. I've just made a strawberry and mint Christmas tree. Spirit rain. We'll have some pumpkin pie and we'll do some caroling. There, and I'm going to put some mint around the bottom. Keep going. Time to dust. Now you're going to see that you got toothpicks sticking out in some places because you didn't stick them in far enough or anything like that. No, I need to just. Then you can take a, a metal spoon like this, otherwise you're going to prick your fingers. And you just push a little bit on those toothpicks to stick them in a little further. I see that I've put a few toothpicks in and didn't put anything on them. That's silly too. Okay, now just a little bit more mint around the bottom, I think. Blackberries, spread them out. And now, we have to snow on this. Have a happy holiday. Everyone's dancing merrily. There, look at this. Okay, so all you do is you take icing sugar in a, a small strainer like this, and we're gonna snow on this. Isn't that pretty? Gently, gently snowing. It's a lot of work, it's funny work, but you know, it feels like you're doing something Christmas. I love it. Remember my mom complaining because we'd make these huge meals for everybody and then people would just, it would be gone. And she'd say, oh, that took two days and it's just gone. <laughs> there, masterpiece. A little more snow. I don't really want heavy snow on the bottom. It's just nicer to have it on the top. And if it's on the bottom of the plate, that's also looking nice. Voila! A Christmas tree centerpiece. So then you set that aside while you get busy with other things. Now I just have to clean up my little mess for a minute. Take this to the side. And I'm very, and I'm gonna get rid of the chocolate. Don't need any more chocolate for now. I will need more chocolate when I'm doing the, the cream puff centerpiece. I have to say that looks mighty fine. There's just a few places that I would like to put a little more mint in, but I can do that when I have a little spare time. Move this to the back. I'm gonna grab some tomatoes. I'm gonna take a small little thing like this and I have got some broccoli and I have got some nice curly because you, you can make a great big one of these but I just don't have time for it right now so I'm thinking well, I'll just make a small little vegetable tree oh, I need my knife any knife icing sugar can go to the back because, you know, like I said, people make healthier choices these days. So you need a little florets. You don't want too many. And this is going to be a little easier because I'm not dipping before I put this in here. You can use cauliflower, too. I've got a few little florets of cauliflower back here, too, just to make it a variety. I think I will do a crowning glory. It wasn't easy with just a tomato, see, with that. Oh, should have put it in first, I guess. Finished. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not quite. So I just need a few florets of some broccoli. You, want, you don't want them to be big, you need small pieces. So, 
I'm going to put the green on the top. Actually, it would be nice to put just a little tomato in the middle somewhere, home. I think I might do that. So yeah, it makes it, this would be pretty. And then, like I said, in the, this is going to continue on the whole show, and we'll show you how you make a cream puff tree when I'm done with all of this. First, I'm just going to put these little florets because from the top to the bottom, you don't want them to be, you know, not too big. And you want to break them off. Time, pretty baby. Hey, what would Christmas be without a Christmas song from Elvis? So I covered Elvis. It's Christmas time, pretty baby. So I put another toothpick in here. And I'm going to stick a tomato in there. So look how pretty that's already starting to get. Santa Claus is back in town. Then as I get to the bottom, of course, they'll be bigger. I keep spearing myself with these things, so be a little careful with that. Sun is shining today, but there is definitely snow on the ground. So when you have a when you have a tree like this going on, you're going to want to definitely have a little dip for people to have with it. I try to do that. Turn out the lights. It's coming down your chimney tonight. Whoa, Christmas time! Look at that. It's already pretty. Oh, got a spear coming through there. So I'm just going to continue and I'm going to put all kinds of tomatoes in here. Get these centerpieces made first because they hold in the fridge. So put, put a whole row of just tomatoes around there. Does look very Christmassy, doesn't it? That's really easy too. You just sticking toothpicks in and, and putting the um, fruits and the vegetables on. Not fruits, well, we call. Believe it or not, tomato is a fruit. That's what I was going to say. Oh, I got one roll going. He fell off already. Yeah, it's really nice to have, when I'm doing this thing because it's quite tedious, the work, you definitely want to have some kind of music playing. Just for the mood. Just so you can sort of sing and dance around the kitchen, I'm guessing. One of the songs that we're going to be doing on the Christmas concert for sure. I have a lot of fun because I do a song like this and then I go out into the audience and, you know, find myself Santa Claus out there. It's when everybody runs and hides. And in my entire career, I've had a lot of fun entertaining folks. Let's make it fun. Okay, I'm going to stick all the little tomatoes on first, and I'm going to fill in the gaps with the other vegetables. I think I'm just going to put the broccoli or uh, cauliflower around the bottom. So I'm first doing this part of the show, and then I'm going to get into some um, cookie baking and filling the little profiliers to show you how to to uh, do anything with that, you know, it's awesome. There you go, I'm gonna stick some more broccoli in the middle here. I'm gonna get bigger pieces in there now because you want the tree to build down. I've also got parsley that I could use, but I'm finding that as long as I've got the broccoli in here, I probably don't need too much parsley. I'll see what I do. This is a song that you're listening to it's, uh, that we wrote. I've said many times on my show, but for any new listeners, I, I was a caterer in um, Okotoks in Calgary area for 11 years. We were so busy over the Christmas season that when Christmas Day came, we kind of just wanted to sleep because 
you really did parties right up until then. It was a pretty crazy time. And as much as I like to cook, and as successful as it all was, I, I wouldn't want to do it anymore. You haul your house out, you haul it back in, you cook from five in the morning until uh, about like seven o'clock till you're serving. To add insult to injury, my husband and I always played music. So we then would finish up with the cooking and then we'd do the gig. It was crazy times. This is playing. <laughs> well, I'm gonna continue on this Christmas tree because I wanna show you the end product. And I wanna get a few things out there to show you just how it will look to have a centerpiece and how you can put some other things around it. So just going to walk over here and move a few things off the stove and then put my centerpieces out and get ready for the next angle. Well, I'm getting my tree together, but I wanna just put a few more tomatoes in here. And I'm gonna make a quick dip, a real simple quick dip, because I happen to have some fresh dill. If you don't have fresh dill, you can also use just, you know, regular dill, dry dill, because after all, this is the middle of winter and nothing grows in my garden right now. But I did buy some, some fresh dill. Mostly I have, look at that. Look at that, it's pretty. Now, what I've got here is a little bit of mayonnaise in this dish. I bought a tablespoon, because it just makes a little bit more of a bonding. And I'm gonna put in some sour cream. A Little bit of pepper, you can add a little lemon juice if you want, but my druther is to put a little lemon rind in it. And I have the fresh dill. Nothing like fresh dill. So here I am chopping away because you want it to be a fine kind of a dill to go in there. All right. Oh, it smells great. And that makes a big difference if somebody's having just plain vegetables and they, it's a still healthier choice. I always use half fat mayonnaise and, and half fat sour cream too. So now you've got a nice little, put them in festive bowls, you know, like that. I got a little red bowl with this, and you're gonna serve it right beside. Look at this, is that pretty or what? Now I have baked some cookies earlier. They're called hazelnut butter cookies. Now, I'm going to show you that recipe here pretty quick um, because it's a cookie that can be made two ways. You can make them like a, like a shortbread cookie that you can put in, a, in the fridge and slice and dip in chocolate, or you can just make balls like this. So it's, there's a lot of hazelnut in there and very little flour. So I'm just gonna put my trees to the side and I'm gonna put my dill over there with that. And why I wanna do this is because you have some nice colorful cups now I've dusted, when you take it out of the oven, you dust it right away with a little bit of powder, so they're called snowballs. And you put them on the side like this. So people can make their choice if they wanna have strawberries, fresh, healthy. These are just rolled in the hazelnut, like that. It's funny to listen to that song. Oh, look at that, I didn't do that right. I wanted that one in this color. Color coordinating, of course. Because Christmas is all about festive, festive colors and, well, it's about children. But when you're cooking and doing things, so you want to give your family the most beautiful festive colors and things that you can do. And as I'm uh, getting ready to say, well, this is the end of my show, although I haven't cooked nearly as many things as I wanted to cook yet, I'm just going to do another Christmas show. So make sure you watch us on Monday nights on my regular Sammy's Cottage Kitchen shows. And uh, I'm on at seven o'clock every Monday evening, but also be watching for the Christmas shows that will be on during the Christmas season. And they'll be playing quite regularly throughout. There, isn't that beautiful? I didn't even need them all. So that's the beginning of your 
Centerpiece is a beautiful dessert centerpiece. You see, when you're having a big meal, people don't want to have to have, you know, really, really, really heavy desserts. So that is a great way of not having heavy desserts. And this is just one little vegetable tree. Now, you can make it way more elaborate. You make a great big vegetable tree like that if you want to. But I find people are gonna go for the fruit before they go for the vegetables. So I never over, overdo the vegetable tree. Uh, I wanna thank you for hanging in here and uh, watching me play around with the food and doing my Christmas uh, centerpiece, food centerpieces. I'm going to have more in my next show. I'm going to be making a food centerpiece with my little beautiful little pofiliers. Mm, they turned out great. I feel like I should eat something, but I don't want to mess the tree up, so I'm not going to eat anything this time. I'm just going to wait till somebody else takes the first one and messes it up. I want you to remember that life is good. We live in a great country. Keep on keeping on, no matter what comes in your way, and enjoy life. And for heaven's sakes, enjoy the new recipes and keep on cooking. And yeah, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Till next time.